I can say is, wow, wow. To be in the presence of God, to be in the midst of worship, to have prophetic words and prayer going on over folks. I don't know if it gets much better than this. Now, some might say, you need to shoot, put your uh, gaze a little bit higher. Well, I don't know, man. The presence of God, it doesn't get much higher than that. And as long as I have known him, he has been faithful, he has been true. Uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, I don't know if everybody here today is walking with Jesus or not. But if you're not, you're missing out. You're missing out on just, not just eternal life that comes later, but, but heaven here on earth, his presence, his speaking to you, his walking with you day by day. There is nothing like it on the face of the planet. And so I just encourage you, draw near to God, Scripture says, and he'll what? Draw near to you. So I want to encourage you to do that today. Uh, turn with me in, in Matthew chapter 9, and you might put a, your finger also in Mark chapter 5. Matthew chapter 9, we'll begin in, in verse 18, and then just try to put a finger on, on Mark chapter 5. Now, we put, I just want to share, just talk to the family here. Can I just talk to the family? We put scriptures up behind, behind us. That is, one, if you forgot your Bible today, and sometimes we do. And two, for visitors who may not have, have a Bible, may not have come with a Bible. But for the family of God, bring your Bibles, look at it there, uh, and, and, and know where it's at, and, and be, a, uh, be a student of the Word, because the Word will change your life. It will absolutely do that. So is that okay to say? Bring your Bibles, be in your Bibles. Uh, uh, this is just for visitors and somebody, folks who have forgotten their Bibles. So. And sometimes we put it up so we're all in the same version. I'm reading out of the New King James today, uh, in case you're wondering. If you want to write down a title for this morning's message is, Oh, That Our Faith Would Grow. It uh, comes out of a cry of my heart to God. And I think a cry of his heart to us. Jesus says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? My answer for him is going to be yes. Yes, he will find that in us. Let's take a look at a situation that took place that Jesus had to deal with. Mark, Matthew 9, verse 18. While he spoke these things to them, meaning Jesus... Behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Just realize this as I was reading here. It says, This man came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but you come and lay your hands upon her, and she'll live. He worshiped Jesus by believing that he would do what only he could do. Amen. He showed his trust and his faith and confidence by saying, Jesus, if you just come, my, my daughter will live. Yes. Now that's worship. Yes. It's believing God for what he has said, believing his promises, and, and, and throwing all caution to the wind. I'll show you in just a moment how this man did that. He was throwing caution to the wind by coming to Jesus. Now, this is the story uh, in Matthew, and Mark and Luke tell, tell us the same story, but they give him a name. The man's name is Jairus. It's, it's one of the things that always, I, I'm just so impressed with that God knows our name, he knows our address, he knows our circumstance, he knows our situation. Yes. He doesn't have to go through a Rolodex to try to find our name, see if it's still in there. He knows who we are, and, and in scripture, oftentimes, people are not nameless. They have a name, they have a location. This man had an occupation. He was the ruler of the synagogue. And, and we read here that he was a man of position, being that, a ruler of the synagogue, a, a man of position and influence who had heard of Jesus. Now, he, had, he may have been following the reports about him. And for all we know, he may have secretly attended one of Jesus' meetings. 
Why would he have been secret? Because it was politically incorrect to follow Jesus in his day. In the Israel of his day, the, the authorities of his day said basically, if you follow Jesus, if you believe in Jesus, you talk about Jesus, we will throw you out. And you will be gone from your occupations, your family, your house of worship, all that you know, you will be thrown out in a heartbeat. So this man very well may have, may have sneaked into some meetings because he seemed to have a clue about Jesus. Jarius, on this day, the worst po possible thing happened in his life. His daughter died. I mean, can you imagine what this man must have been going through? His daughter died. Now, we don't, we don't know the age of this daughter, but you know, we assume that it's a, you know, we think of our daughters, we normally think of little ones. Now, I know they grow up. But his daughter died, and yet, you know, Lori and I have been through two situations where our daughters that look like might die both of our daughters one when the oldest was was almost 13 and of course recently with Becky we have walked through this the horror the shuddering uh, I, I remember trying to do my job as a, a, a salesman for an electrical firm meeting with purchasing agents and different ones and uh, putting murine in my eyes to try to make the red go away because I'd be sobbing in the midst of driving. I, I know the pain of the concern of a daughter dying or a child of any, any kind. One of my father's greatest fears was that one of his children would die before him. That was always a fear that he had. But I'll, I want to let you know we outlasted him. So, so, so it, didn't, uh, uh, it, it never happened that way. I don't know exactly how it happened and I speculate different ways but at some point contrary to the rest of the culture Jairus began to believe that Jesus who he said he was and like many of us his desperation drove him to Jesus so here he is on this day how many how many of you did desperation drive you to Jesus man most of us that's the case now some of you praise God were raised in the church and were uh, you know, you just kind of moved along in, into his presence and a walk with him, and that's good. Some of us, we were desperate. In fact, I don't know that necessarily my desperation has ever gone away. Uh, I, I'm desperate for him. I'm desperate to be more like him. I'm, I'm desperate to be molded and shaped into his image. I'm desperate. Never lose your desperation. And if you're not desperate... Just go to him and say, God, I, I need to be desperate, but I don't know how to do it. He'll help you. Well, will he make something bad happen? No. Only Satan says that. But he will, he will work with you. He will touch you. He will reach into your heart. He will, he will change you from complacency and apathy. You ever had that go on in your life? Complacency and apathy towards God and the things of God? Don't raise your hand. But, but I have. I've walked it out. And it's cold and it's lifeless and everything else is, could be fine in the world. But when you're apathetic towards God, when there isn't that desperation, there's something cold going on in your heart and life. He comes to Jesus and he says, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hands on her and she will live. Now I'll tell you, that's faith. That's right. Now, I don't know, I, I didn't do an exhaustive study, maybe some of you more biblical scholars out there have, but I don't know if Jesus had raised anybody from the dead yet. I mean, it isn't just like coming and, and, and bringing your daughter and go, Jesus, would you lay your hands on her because she's very, very sick? No, she was dead. Dead. She, what? she, she was dead, and I, I don't know if there's any place that he knew of that Jesus has raised anybody from the dead. But yet he has the audacity to come and say, and this is what worship is sometimes, this audacity. It's coming with faith and trust and belief and falling down and going, God, I know that you can do it, no matter what anybody says, whatever our situations are. And this man comes and he says, my daughter is dead, but if you'll lay your hands on her, she'll live. May I say about your future, no matter what age you are, 
God has a plan and a purpose for our life and a future, according to Jeremiah 29, 11, but all throughout the scriptures. Even if at some point you think my future is over, my future is dead, there's nothing's going to change. That is a life in the pit of hell. All it requires is the touch of Jesus and everything comes alive again. And he is our hope. He is our strength always. We see how Jesus responds to faith. Scripture says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we see how he responds to faith. It says Jesus arose and went with him. Go figure. The Son of God responds to Jairus' faith by rising up and going with him. As you and I walk in faith, the very presence of God will rise up and walk with us. We will never be alone. We don't have to be alone. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but he gets up and he walks with the man because of his faith. Even in our darkest hours, Jesus will be there. We will never be alone. Lauren, you had a couple dark hours uh, over your life, just probably just a couple. But he's always been with you. He's never been, a, been apart from you. Why? Because, and I, I didn't talk to Lauren beforehand, but I, but I know Lauren. In fact, I've known Lauren just about all her life, which says how old I am and how young she is. <laughs> but I know through every one of those dark hours that Lauren held on to Jesus and Jesus came in and met her where she was at and brought about miracles in her life. Not the least of which is restoring her sight. Now that's kind of cool. Um, but, but so many more, so many more beyond that. When we walk in faith and reach out to him, he will be there. And I know this by scripture, not just by experience. I know it by experience, but scripture says in Psalm 23, 4, that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to fear anything because God is with me. God will be with us no matter what dark road we walk. He will be with us. We can be confident of that. And you may not be walking in the valley of the shadow of death, but it might be a very, very dark valley, valley of discouragement. Valley of sickness that doesn't let go. A valley of hopelessness that nothing will change. If you will lay hold of Jesus, if you will come to him and worship and say, Jesus, if you just lay your hand on my life, I'll live. And he will lay his hand upon your life and you will live without a doubt. If we will trust him, if we will choose to put our confidence in him, if we'll walk in faith, he will always be with us. We will never need to be afraid. I've shared with you numerous times, I won't go on again, but the day that God delivered me from fear because I used to be such a fearful person, walked in fear always. Uh, uh, my goodness, I walked in fear as a pastor, hoping you'd never find out that I'm not all that. <laughs> they really knew, you know, they'd show me the door. And then there was a day that God delivered me from fear. And the things that used to terrify me don't anymore. Because God is faithful to walk with us wherever we go. If you're bound by anything, God will deliver you. He will deliver you. Some of that deliverance was taking place this morning up here as Pastor, Bo uh, Pastor Tom led us. More deliverance can take place as you need it. But don't look so much for the deliverance. Look for Jesus. Rush to him. Hold on to him. He'll take care of the rest. Wow, faith. How do we get this faith? How do we get faith like this man had? How do we get the faith that truly worships God? You know, our worship is not just our songs, but it's our faith. How do we get this faith? I want to give you three things that will help you to get faith. The first one is the word. The Word of God. Let the Word of God dwell richly in you. The Word of God. Be in it daily. Daily. As you spend time in the Word, you will begin to hear the voice of God. Really, Pastor, you hear him audibly? You hear any other voices? Um, most of the time, I don't hear him audibly. I'm trying to think if I, if I have before. But I open up the Word of God. And... 
and I see what is written there. See, because the Word of God is living. It is not a dead book. It is living. It is God-breathed. God breathes in it, and then He breathes into us. And as we open it up, we begin to read. We begin to hear. We begin to, we can be confronted of sin. Our hearts can be just melted. Um, uh, w- there are times that I, that I weep as I read because he's speaking things in his, into my heart. Uh, just all sorts of things. You want to have faith, be in the Word. Well, Pastor, i got a life. I don't have all day to be in the Word like you. The reality is, I don't have time either. But I carve out time. I, I carve, and, and it doesn't have to be, please, it doesn't have to be hours. Uh, start with, with 15 minutes. I've talked to someone once who said, well, I, uh, I said, are, are you in the Word? And he said, I, I, uh, uh, I read a, a, a devotion every morning, you know, it's one verse devotion, and yeah, yeah, so I'm in the Word. I said, if you, if you eat a small piece of toast in the morning, is that going to get you through the day? Well, no. Well, may I say, one verse probably isn't either. Go through the Scriptures. Use a... Use our Bible calendar that we have in the back. I believe in it, and I believe what that little piece of paper did in my life. Or use another, another version of doing it. And, and it. and it's fine. It's just that we go through the Word of God. Now, don't be condemned. Oh, man, I, I, missed, I, I missed a week. I'm, I'm just lost. No, no, just pick up where you started. I mean, pick up where you left off and keep going. What if it takes me a year and a half to get through the Word? That, that's okay. That's all right. Just, just do it. Just get through. The Word will increase your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Yes. Fellowship is the second thing that will really help your faith. Did, did anyone else feel their faith grow today just by being here, by, by being a part of the worship, by, being, by hearing the Word that was shared that I wouldn't have picked up on on my own? Uh, uh, by, by the prayer that was going on and people being touched by the Spirit of God. Our faith grows as we're in fellowship. Well, I don't need church to be saved. No, that's true. But may I say this, and I, I'm trying to say it as kindly as I can, you won't be much of a Christian if you're not in fellowship. One, you'll be walking in disobedience because God said, don't, don't separate yourselves from other believers. Be a part. And he talked about his church. He talked about those things. Our church is perfect? No. You know why? Because you and I are in them. And, and we're not perfect. But fellowship is so important. Put that at the top of your priority list. Right after the word, put fellowship. Try to be here. Don't, I don't want anyone to kill themselves. But try to be here on Sundays, Wednesdays. If, if, if you possibly can, we won't meet tonight for our time of prayer and fasting. But we'll be meeting Monday night for an hour, Tuesday night for an hour, and Wednesday is our, our, regular, our regular service, but it'll be prayer and fasting emphasized on that night. Uh, come. In fact, those of you that have been coming, I'm so encouraged uh, by, by your attendance and being here, and it, it, it builds faith in me. So you're doing a good work in my life, too. So thank you so much. Uh, the, the third area, and you can put these in whatever direction you want. I probably should have put this second. But... I think something that really will increase your faith is prayer Amen. and fasting. Amen. Now, I know that everybody loves fasting, but when we are fasting, and that's one of the points that uh, Pastor Tom was making today. He was talking about breakthrough. Prayer and fasting brings about spiritual breakthrough that can't take place any other way. So these are important things to build our faith. Talk to God. Listen to Him from the Word. In fact, uh, I don't know how you do it, but for when I'm in the Word, it's a two-way conversation. I'm reading, I'm praying. I'm reading, I'm praying uh, as, as I do that. So include those things, and you will, you will find your faith grows, and we need to have our faith grow. Let me just say this regarding prayer and fasting. As you go through this week, um, as you see breakthroughs happening in your life, you see God answering prayers, whatever it might be, would you call the office? Would you call the office and tell us? Because uh, I, I would like to have a few uh, give testimonies possibly next Sunday. And so do that. What you're seeing happening in your life, call 
uh, and let us know so we can plan on that. It is my prayer for all of us that our, that our faith would grow exponentially during this time of prayer and fasting. Do you, do, you know, do you know what exponentially means? It isn't just adding a little bit at a time. It's kind of like this explosion of, <laughs> of growth. And that's what I'm asking that God would cause all of our faith to grow. Lord, I want it in me, but I also want it in the congregation too. Let's go to verse 23 of, of the chapter that we're in here. Continue the story of Jairus. When Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing, he said to them, Make room, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. I was reading this passage just the other morning, and, and I realized we must be quite careful in how we respond to the prophetic. Quite careful. If we respond in faith, we open ourselves up to receive all that God has intended. Scripture tells us that He has more for us than anything that we could dream or imagine. How many? I, I don't know about you, but I want that. I want more than I can dream or imagine. I, count me in, God. Count me in. But without faith, and hear this, we can miss His visitation. Oh my goodness, I can't think of anything worse than the, on the face of the planet. I don't know how many times that I've prayed, even for RCC, God, God, don't pass us by. Don't pass us by. That prayer along with the prayer, Lord, help us to see you. A song we used to sing years ago. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner across this land. I still want that. I still want that. Go with me to... Uh, Mark chapter 5. Keep your finger in Matthew. Then go with me to Mark chapter 5. There's, in, in Matthew 8, um, we're in Matthew 9, but in Matthew 8, it's the same story, but it's, it's defined a little bit better in Mark chapter 5. And here we have Jesus having an encounter with a seriously demon-possessed man. He was not a man with just a problem. People come into my office sometimes and they'll say, Pastor, I have a problem. Okay, well, let's talk. Let's talk. Some things those can be talked through. Some things those need to be prayed through. But this guy, this guy was light years beyond that. He was demon-possessed. We read in Mark chapter 5, verse 1, Then they came to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes. This is Jesus and his disciples. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. Uh, Luke tells us that he was also naked. So he's demon-possessed. They can't, they can't restrain him. He's living in tombs. And it says in verse 5, And always, night and day, he was in the mountain, in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. Can you imagine this man's agony? His agony with being him, the pain that he was so desperately in. And verse 6 says, When Jesus, from a, uh, when, he, when he saw the demon possessed man. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. What spoke were the demons in him? What ran was the man? And there's something that I realized in a conversation that I had with someone last night, and I never thought about this before, is that the will is stronger than the demonic. Amen. I mean, I think it's in Luke that, that Jesus uh, has a little more of a conversation uh, with the man, and the man says, uh, my name is Legion, because there's a legion. I don't know how many a legion is. I mean, if I, uh, it's a lot. Whole lot. He had a whole lot of demons in him. I mean, how, how could anybody overcome that? This man saw Jesus coming, and even though he was possessed by the demonic, 
He said, I will get to Jesus. I will get to Jesus. Some Maybe his vocal cords are restricted and all, the, all that could speak, all that would speak was the legion of demons. But he, he pressed, he pressed, he pressed. And he got to Jesus. Let me just say a, a, a little bit more on that. The human will is pretty strong. Some have said, it, said it's stronger than Satan and stronger than God because we can make decisions that Satan can't overcome and God won't. And so with our will, for our will to be sanctified, you know what I mean by sanctified? Cleansed and made holy. I'm gonna come back to the word. We gotta be people of the word of God. Psalm 19.7, one of my favorites, I always am telling you, you probably know it by heart too. It says, gosh, it says, and my mind went blank. <laughs> it's a really good scripture, though. <laughs> Do you have it there? Uh, uh, Br Bree's looking up for me. The, the point of Psalm 19, the law of the Lord is perfect. There it comes. Whether it's there or not. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord, the word of God, is perfect, converting the soul. Our soul is our mind, our emotions, and our will. Each one of those things needs to be transformed by the hand of God, and the Word of God is what God uses to transform our soul. And so, I'm not just saying that you can will yourself into anything. I, I, I will myself to be different. Okay, maybe you can, but what if, the, what if, what if God helps you? What if God touches your will so that what you will now is what he wills. When what you will is what he wills, you'll pray whatever you want and it'll be answered. We need to pray that way. So here's this man who by sheer force of will runs to Jesus in spite of being demonically oppressed and possessed. Unbelievable what it must have taken. And so Jesus uh, goes and, and the to him and the demons say look we know who you are you don't torment us before our time and uh, they they said to him Jesus let us go into that nearby herd of pigs and Jesus let them and the pigs all ran over the, off the cliff and all died I'm sure that the pig herders who who uh, that was their livelihood uh, they weren't near as rejoicing but, but let me go beyond that. Mark chapter 5, verse 14. So those who fed the swine fled, and they told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that had happened. And then they came to Jesus and saw that the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. That is a place that I'd want to celebrate if I saw that. My goodness, that was an impossibility. But the tag on that is, and they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. The people of the city saw the demon-possessed man. They saw Jesus, and they begged Jesus to leave. Um, Man, talk about missing the boat, missing what's going on. They should have been rejoicing that this man, who nobody could even chain up, is probably scary to ever go by that. I mean, anybody that had a funeral probably took their life in their hands. Uh, it, it, it was a terrible time. But they didn't rejoice that this man was free. They, they saw, and, and I don't doubt their livelihood being hurt, some of them, but they saw what was going on. They didn't understand and they begged him to leave. The problem was is they approached the situation without faith. Again, being more concerned with the pigs than the man who was free. Tom brought, uh, Pastor Tom brought to my mind a uh, discussion that we'd had uh, some time ago and we always have projects to do, always things we put our hands to do, always things that need to get done. And uh, 
I wish it was, you know, my guitar with my feet on my desk playing Kumbaya all day, but, but uh, it's not that way. And we had talked, and he reminded me, reminded me of our discussion uh, of a, about a year ago. And we just had coined this one little phrase, people over projects. It doesn't matter if we get the job done if people got hurt in the process. It doesn't matter if the project got done and, and, and people weren't showing our love and our care. And so we have these, they, they probably didn't hear that phrase here in the scriptures here, but they were more concerned about the project, the pigs, than the person. May we never be that way. May we always be concerned about people. And that's, that's part of who we are. And that's part of our mission as Rancho Christian Center, connecting people to God and to one another. And we do this by loving one another, by relationship, by being together. Please, if I, if I might plead with you, don't walk in and walk out of services. Walk in, get to know folks. Be a part of a home group. Um, be a part of serving. Uh, come to men's meetings, ladies' meetings, whatever, so that you might be connected and the relationship might grow because you are important. Yes. You are important to us and to the kingdom. Back to uh, Mark chapter 9, if we can. As we go back to Mark chapter 9, it will be in verse 24, but let me say this about going back to, uh, excuse me, Matthew uh, chapter 9. Um, those folks where the man got, got delivered, they missed their visitation. I guess my heart is, again, may we never miss ours. As a church or as individuals. There's a visitation that God has for each one of us as individuals. Meet with him, spend time with him, and you will be visited by the living God. Isn't that right, Rosie? You'll be visited by God. Because I know that God has visited you and will continue to visit you because he loves you desperately, desperately. Matthew 9, 24. And he said to them, meaning Jesus, make room for the, for the girl is not dead but sleeping, and they ridiculed him. May I say that without faith, we will say impossible, absurd, when we are confronted with the prophetic. When we hear prophetic words that are just crazy in our natural minds, go so contrary to what we would think, that goes so much into the impossible, we will say if we don't have faith, that's impossible, that's ridiculous, that's absurd. In this year of clarity and renewed vision, may I ask, how are you approaching this word for the year? How are you approaching it? May I say, approach it with faith. God, I believe that you're going to give us as a church clarity and renewed vision. But Lord God, I believe also, and I'm going to press and I'm going to push and I'm going to pursue you that I might receive for myself clarity, a prophetic clarity, prophetic vision. Lord God, if anything has May I say this too? If anything has grown cold in your heart, your fire isn't what it used to be. Cry out, Lord God, renew the flame in me. Renew vision in me. For indeed, he will do it. We have to ask ourselves, will we approach this year with faith or doubt and unbelief? I, the reason I say that is because I've known people in the past who have said, ah, eh, just, just Pastor Dave, Apostle Dave. Another word, another year. And, and I would just be, what? If we approach it that way, we, we won't receive anything. We must approach it with faith. Faith prays this as it presses. Oh God, let this word come into my life, my families, and my churches. Lord God, let there be clarity in my family that as we pray, as we follow you, as we seek you, Lord, would you, and, and even if, Maybe it's never been that way before in your life or in your family. God wants to take you to a clear path. The steps of a good man, a righteous man and woman are ordered of the Lord. He wants to guide your steps. He wants to give you clarity in where he wants you to walk. And all you got to do is believe him and follow him. That's all. Faith and obedience. And he will do the rest. Doubt and unbelief is at best apathetic, and at worst, like the crowd Jesus was facing, 
It was openly hostile and antagonistic to his word. Do you believe what God is saying to us? The father believed, Jairus believed, and he received the reward of his faith. Luke 137 says, but with faith, nothing shall be impossible for God. And you read scriptures and there's impossibilities all over the planet. But with God, nothing will be impossible if we'll walk in faith. Verse 25. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand and the girl arose. May I say, unbelief must be put outside before miracles can happen. If you're struggling with unbelief, you tell unbelief in the name of Jesus. Let go of me, get out of my heart, get out of my home, go back to the pit of hell from where you've come, because where unbelief is, there are no miracles. It comes in the place where faith is. You and I must be so very, very careful. If we don't reject unbelief, if we refuse to believe, we will see that where others who walk in faith are full of joy, we will be full of cynicism, bitterness, and darkness if we don't kick unbelief to the curb and leave it there and drive away. In uh, C.S. Lewis's uh, book series, The Chronicles of Narnia, how many of you, any of you have read them? They're, they're, they're over the top. Um, the, the final book in the series is called The Last Battle. And, and I don't know if you remember that or not, uh, but there's, there's a scene, and it's really the, the end of, of, of all time, and, and the animals of Narnia and the people are, are going into Aslan's land. Aslan is the, a representation of Jesus uh, in the Chronicles of Narnia. He's a great lion. And so as they are going, and, and the words always are further on and further in. Amen. Further on and further. That's a, that's a good word for us in the things of God. Further on and further in. And they're, they're rushing into his land, and they're, they're going up, up these mountaintops. And it's just, it's just beautiful, the, the colors and, and uh, uh, the, the fruit and, and everything in that land. But they're seeing all this, and they're just amazed. But there's this group this group of dwarfs, and this isn't a knock on short people, the, the, this group of dwarfs, and, and it's kind of a long story, but, but they, through some circumstances, thought that they were in a stable, and it was black, and it was dark, but they weren't. They were out in this beautiful expanse, and so uh, one of the queens of Narnia got some, some flowers and said, look, I'll let them smell this. And, and they'll know that they're, they're not in the dark. And one of the dar dwarfs pushes it away because he thought that they were taking the... C.S. Lewis is very, very... Uh, and the English, very proper uh, uh, stable litter. Uh, they thought that they were, they were uh, putting stable litter in his face. And then, and then Aslan came and he, and he, and he produced... Uh, all sorts of food and wine for them, for the dwarfs and the kings and queens. They gave it to the, to the dwarfs who could not see them. And the dwarfs thought they were, beginning, were be, being given uh, hay, stale bread, uh, water out of the horse trough. It is such a, a clear picture to me of living by faith or living by doubt and unbelief. If we live by faith, we will see the wonders of God every single day. If we live in doubt and unbelief, we will, we will be singing, nobody knows the trouble I've seen, we'll be woe is me, and, and we'll wonder why nothing ever changes. With God, with faith in God, all things are possible. I'm going to draw this to a close this morning. Again, reminding you, the title today, Oh, That Our Faith Would Grow. Yes. Verse 26. After this girl is raised from the dead, it says in verse 26, and the report of this went out into all the land. Let me just tell you, when the results of rejecting doubt and unbelief will, will begin to spring up testimonies all over the place, and you won't be able to keep people silent. You won't be able to keep it uh, here in a small building. It'll spread like wildfire. Faith, P, 
people walking in faith in what God does, it begins to spread like wildfire. All of you here today have got a testimony of what God has done in your life. When it looked darkest, when it looked the bleakest, but God still moved and God still came. You, you need to be telling folks about that. You, you know what? If you don't uh, have uh, your, your theology of the, the, uh, of the person of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you don't have all your theological stuff in a row, that's okay. You tell them what Jesus did for you. You tell them what he did. I don't know where it'll be, and maybe it'll be through treasured hearts, but Amherst, you've got, you got a marvelous testimony of what God has done in your life. And, and in the process, there's a lot of young women that need to hear the redemptive value of God. And then, then you got this guy sitting next to you that's, that you're married to, you too, and I, I think you've got a good man. And then you've got children. Oh, what God has done how he can bring flowers out of ashes. He is absolutely marvelous. Uh, uh, he's done that with, with Lori and I. Brought flowers and beauty out of ashes. But may I just say this to you? Be patient with the doubting. Those that doubt, be patient with them. But don't drink from the same cup, whatever you do. Shine with the light of Jesus. Choose to walk in faith. Be ruthless to take hold of faith. You know about ruthless? You, you just will not give unbelief a, a, a spot in your life. I, I, I've shared with you before about being on, on scaffolding here when we're building this building. And we're putting up drywall. And a uh, guy is with me and he says, uh, what happens if we don't get in here in this place on time? Because we had to be out of our old building at a certain date. What happens if we don't get into this building on time? And I said, we'll get here on time. Right. Why do I know this? Because Pastor Bob's been sharing with us, you believe the prophets and you'll prosper. Yeah. The prophet said, Apostle Dave said, we'll be here on time. Amen. I wasn't going anywhere else. And so we're up there. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I'd feel a little better if we had a contingency plan. Don't need one. We'll be here on time. And we stuck to that, and God honored faith. And you don't know what Apostle Dave went through, to, what he had to do to make that happen. It was miraculous. But we were here on time. That's what I mean by being ruthless, laying hold of faith. You refuse to give place to the doubt, to the unbelief. You lay hold of it. And as you do, and as you're patient with the doubting, one of, the two, one of two things will happen with them. Those who don't believe will slowly be infected with your faith. Now, I, that's true. That is not theory. Lori and I have seen that take place. People will begin to be infected with your faith, or they'll flee from you, one or the other. <laughs> either, either one is possible. But be patient with the doubting. Believing before you see it. It's faith. Jairus believed that Jesus could raise up his daughter before he saw it. That's called faith. Jairus came with faith. That's called worship. May we grow in faith. May we grow in worship. When things don't seem to be changing in our life, may we not despair, but may we declare, God, I believe you can do it. I'm going to believe it before I see it. Let's stand together. I want to just close today by, by asking the Lord to deposit in each one of our hearts today a greater measure of faith than we have ever had before. But, but here's the thing. We've got to lay hold of it. We cannot let go of it. We cannot let it slip through our fingers through, um, I don't know, lethargy, just letting it go. Because Satan wants to take faith from us. He wants to steal faith out of your heart. But we must not allow him to do it. We must be tenacious. We must be ruthless in laying hold of faith.
Father God, I pray for our congregation today and I ask, Lord God, that there would be a rain upon this house, Lord God, of your presence. Father, that, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Lord God, we have heard the word today. Let faith be apprehended by each heart. Lord, would you fill each heart to overflowing, I pray. Fill each heart. And then, Lord God, cause us to be tenacious. As faith fills our heart, let any doubt and unbelief be purged out of our hearts, Lord. Flood it out because there's no room anymore for, for doubt and unbelief. And, Father, make us tenacious. Make us ruthless as we're in our pursuit of you, in our laying hold of faith, in our declarations of who you are more than what we're going through. Father, you are wonderful. I just ask that you would do a work today on each one of us. Because Lord Jesus, some of us are in tough, tough places. But Lord God, to each one in a tough place, I say, hold on to Jesus. He will come and he will rescue you because he is faithful. Father, apprehend our hearts. May we never be the same, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen.